Dorsey, Roberts, and Mayborg, the officials, Wisconsin in their road red uniforms. Milwaukee sporting their Adidas gray. Let's play some college basketball here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're certainly glad you're with us tonight. Wisconsin 8-2 and two have not played any games in Big Ten play. The Big Ten season has not opened up yet. Milwaukee, an identical 8-2, and two, but they are a perfect 2-0 and in their league in Horizon League play. The best defensive team in the nation is Wisconsin's team. And one of the most patient teams offensively is also Wisconsin, as we see here in this first possession. A rare turnover from Jordan Taylor. I mean, really rare. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Pepsi Max. Zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. We love our partnership with Pepsi Max. Look here for the Panthers on their first offensive possession to try to go to the, the post. As you see Allen here, try to go to work, use a little bit of his athleticism against Bruce. And he does, and he's got a bucket. The senior from South Holland, Illinois, averaging nine points and five rebounds. And that's something we've talked about, Darren. He's really added that to his game, being able to get the ball in the post, use his strength, his athleticism, but now he's finishing. It's making him a, a whole new player. Right now, Paris Gulley has the responsibility of guarding the very difficult to guard, Jordan Taylor. He's on him right now. And a high pick, he frees himself loose. And a foul on Paris Gulley. Again, with a shorter roster, without a couple of key guards, and certainly without Kyle Kelm, they can't, no one can get in foul trouble. Well, they can, and one of the things that Bo Ryan and his teams do so well is get to the free throw line. Jordan Taylor in particular draws a lot of contact as both offensive and defensive can't pick up quick fouls early on. Young man out of Phoenix, Arizona, that's Ryan Evans. He averages just a tick under 10 points a game. Evans played 17 minutes against Milwaukee last year in the win for Wisconsin, had just three points. Gully stop, pop, can't get the bounce. Harzma clears himself up. Kalen Williams thought about the three. Ryan Allen, a rare three, and it rings in and out. That's not his specialty. Just three of 12 from outside of the arc. Well, able to get an offensive rebound, but that second time around, the Badgers doing a nice job of making sure, sealing off their men, and coming down, securing the defensive rebound. Wisconsin beat UNLV on Saturday. Milwaukee went on the road to Northern Iowa and was handed a decisive loss, 67-51. Very similar teams, Northern Iowa and Wisconsin, in the way they play the game. And don't take Northern Iowa for a, a not a very good team. They're an excellent team. In fact, talking to the coaching staff, when asking them what happened uh, and that road trip to Iowa, they just said flat out, Northern Iowa's a, a, a better basketball team. So certainly a couple tough losses, one at Michigan State, one at Northern Iowa. And those are the two lone losses. You can add a road win at DePaul for the Panthers. Leaning into Allen, no whistle there, and a follow and good. A bucket there again by Ryan Evans. Hamilton High School in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Uh, made a nice job of creating that contact and really just didn't want to draw Ryan Allen. I didn't, didn't want to draw any fouls, so he leaned back, able to get the offensive rebound to Evans was and go right back up. Boy, Kalen, Kalen Williams had earned himself a shot there with fancy footwork, but then couldn't convert. Got to make their shots, especially ones that are right under the basket. All the way and hard, fighting at home. Bruzewicz. Well, you can't give anybody the baseline drive. You've got to be able to have help defense if that defender or offensive player goes that way. That time, no one able to rotate. Berger and able to get to the rim. Nice drive, nice finish. Stunning defense. I mean stunning. You can see 33.5%. Tony Meyer for three. Firm. Off the back and a long rebound. And Taylor will bring it up for Wisconsin. All the way, looked like he might have walked. No whistle there, and instead he converts. He made the shot that Kayla Williams didn't a moment ago. Well, he's got such good body control. You see, you see their Paris Gully getting bumped back a little bit. Taylor's able to create that contact, but yet he's so good at finishing after it, and that's what really differences, uh, differences him than many other players. Kayla Williams made that shot. The senior guard out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Kayla averaging just under 13. Had 16 points against Northern Iowa, but turned it over seven times. You know Rob Peter doesn't like that. You can't afford to have seven turnovers. I don't care who you're playing against. And they get the job done defensively. Up and over the back, a good call. Kalen Williams lives on emotion, doesn't he? You could see his reaction there. Yeah, he does, which is good and bad. But in a game like this, it's great. 
at the point guard position to have that type of emotion. He's the team leader, so they feed off it. Obviously, a lot of bodies in this building tonight. If they can put a string of baskets together, they can really get some momentum on their side. A lot of fans here to see him making a lot of noise. They are two of six from the floor to start the game. Wisconsin, four of seven. Nice to hear a crowd in the background, isn't it, folks? And a big one. Harzma muscles underneath to his left with a bucket. Just a great post move. Got it. Was decisive. Two dribbles to the middle. Back over his left shoulder. His right shoulder, excuse me. Using his body to create some separation. Finishing with his left. Great move. Good start for uh, Ryan uh, Harzma. Foul called underneath. It's our first time out in this contest. Wisconsin up by just a bucket. Milwaukee's had their chances early, looking to convert more often. One of the most dangerous guards in the country, Jordan Taylor, has already announced his presence. He commands the court. And on the other end, the muscle of Harzma is key. Join head coach Sandy Botham and the Panther women's basketball team for another exciting season of Horizon League action. Great single game tickets are available now. It's an amazing price for amazing fun. Panther women's basketball. One team, one beat. Call the Panther ticket office or visit us online to purchase your tickets today. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. Who says Wednesdays have to be boring? With Pizza Hut's Wing Wednesdays, all you need is a handful of quarters to turn boring Wednesdays into 50 cent Wing Wednesdays. Time to cash in your change jar. Every wing, every Wednesday, only 50 cents each, and only at your Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut delivers midnight or later. Sure, I would like to win a championship. Yes, I would like to be named all league. But when my college career is over, here's what my time in the Horizon League needs to be about. Earning my degree. Earning my degree. Earning my degree. The Horizon League, where students are also athletes, not the other way around. Kyle Kell both with shoulders, Gerard McCallum with a wrist. The official physical therapy provider of Milwaukee Panther Athletics, Kevin O'Connor, SID for Milwaukee, just passed this note along. Those three combined, 172 games and 58 starts worth of experience. They're without those three tonight. And that's big, you know, certainly to, to take down a giant in the Badgers. You kind of need a full squad. They haven't had any games this year, really, with their starting five. So you just wish for all those guys good luck and quick recoveries. You need them back on the court as quickly as possible. Nice switch, doing a nice job helping out defensively. But in the end, it doesn't work out. Bergwin with the three-pointer, the young man, the junior, out of Princeton, Minnesota. It's amazing, right? I mean, some of these guys, the size they have, the moves they have in the post, but yet they can step out. That's what makes them so dangerous is they're not really one, maybe two, maybe three top guys on their squad that can't step out and hit that shot. Gully had that one swatted away. It will remain Milwaukee basketball. Bergeron, by the way, 34% from three, and he shoots. That's his 39th attempt from outside of the arc, so he may stand 6'10", and he may have a bunch of blocks and a bunch of steals. Plays an athletic 6'10". Well, what I like about him is when he's on the perimeter and he catches that ball, as you see Ryan Haggerty come in for Tony Meyer, maybe for a matchup, but when he catches that ball, because he can shoot that three, sometimes when he ball fakes and puts the ball on the ground, as you've seen him do earlier in the season, at 6'10", it's so impressive to me that he's able to get to the basket and finish. He's a great athlete. Haggerty into the game, as mentioned a moment ago. Gully, three, short. 
Haggerty will play a role tonight. He has to. Has no choice with Kyle Kelm sitting. Swings it out for a long three. And Ben Rust, who checked in, had a huge game against UNLV with 25. He's on the board here. And for the Panthers, that's not good. In transition, it, it's hard to match up, but you can never, you cannot leave Brust. Obviously, two games this year of seven of seven from three. You can't leave him, certainly not in transition. That time, he made a pay. Kalen, firm, Haggerty helps. And that's how he will have to help. Gully will go to the line. Ryan Haggerty, a stuntman. We talked with him at halftime in the DePaul game. Rarely plays. He's a young man that comes in and pitches in, but without Kyle Kelm, his energy is needed tonight, and that was an energy play. It's an energy play. That's what he brings. That's what he can control when he's on the court is, is energy, and sometimes it leads to a foul or a mistake, but more times than not, it's leading to positive things like that, keeping the ball alive so one of your teammates can get to the free throw line. Salty veteran coach over there, by the way, working the officials, Bo Ryan, doing his magic out of the gates. 28th season for Bo. More than 600 wins, one of two. You got to make every free throw as well. Being doubled up right now, 14 7. As Taylor brings the basketball up. What a great look from down low. Pretty shot that we have been able to add for tonight's game. And I feel like you're sitting courtside, don't you, folks? Taylor, stop, pop, the senior guard has been missing a lot of shots lately. Now he controls the game as far as dishing the basketball, but he struggled against UNLV. Really, he struggled since they went to North Carolina, played in a very tough game there, and ever since then, he really just hasn't been himself offensively. Tonight's not the night you want him to get back on track, certainly if you're a Panther fan. Haggerty got hammered, there was no whistle. Ryan for three. Harrison tries to get the rebound. Great athletic effort. Great job by the Panthers. The crowd likes it. Yeah, and those are the plays they're going to have to make. Certainly not a lot of shots falling right now. So to stay in it, they've got to give themselves second chance. Kalen blocked. We were talking about Bo Ryan, the third fastest to 250 wins in history. I mean, just a special and spectacular career for Bo. And Gully sits down. Young man Evan Richard comes into the game. Underneath, Allen will go to the line. So Ryan, who has dramatically improved his free throw shooting. That's the second personal, by the way, on Bruzowitz. But Allen has truly improved his free throw shooting. Last three games, he's been good for nine points and nine rebounds in contests. Adrian, big body guy. Harzman was a big, is a big body guy out there. Allen's not. How does he grab nine rebounds a contest? Well, he makes up for the, his lack of height uh, in comparison to those bigs with his athleticism. He can just flat out jump over guys and. And that's that body control we talked about that's helped him on the offensive end. He's had that for years on the defensive end. So rebounding and, and blocking guys out, that's, that's easy for him because of his mass. He's a, he's a thick guy who can jump. So he can do more than, more than just score around the basket. He does a lot of things. Off the mark, firm shot at a three. That's Frank Kaminsky, the freshman. Right back the other way and another miss. Evan Richard, the redshirt freshman, grabs the rebound. There's another young man that can leap. And these are some big minutes against a big time program for these youngsters. Richard out there, we're telling you the fact that Haggerty's going to have to help out. He's an older player. Kalen Williams, is there anything there? Pretty pass underneath. Instead, an offensive foul. Harzma cleared out. Probably a pretty good call by the referee. Certainly contact there. You can see Harzma swing his arm in the replay here. He does a nice job at pick and roll getting to the basket. He does a nice job. Pick, roll, sealing off Taylor. Taylor just does a nice, nicer job, or a better job, I should say, by drawing the contact and then, of course, drawing the attention of the referee. Rob Wilson into the game now. Taylor sits down for a moment. Taylor, dramatic or not, he was in the perfect spot. Back in the game, it looks easy for Ryan Evans that time. Evans has six points. He's three of four from the floor. Well, at 6'6", he's got a little bit of a height advantage over Allen. And, and then to boot, Allen doesn't want to foul. Panthers with these injuries are pretty thin to begin with. Not a lot of 
guys coming off the bench, so not a lot of guys want to pick up fouls on, on cheap fouls, so they head to the bench. But to play defense, they're going to have to play physical. They can't let the Badgers score that easy. Milwaukee 3 of 13 from the floor to open the game. It won't hang around if that keeps up. 11.30 to go here in the first half. Glad to have you with us. Wisconsin on the flip side, shooting 54%, 7 of 13. Student section tries to come alive behind the men in gray tonight. Runner, pretty. Fall though, was it in the cylinder? It was. I tell you, that was a beautiful runner. Didn't get the bounce, and then goaltending is called on Frank Kaminsky. We'll step aside. 11-12 to go. Oh, working Kaminsky. Rob Jeter hoping to get his squad hot. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. Accountability. Service. Learning. Competition. At the Horizon League, victories are important. But values mean more. Join the 2011 Horizon League champion Milwaukee Panthers and Coach of the Year Rob Jeter as they represent the black and gold. Your Milwaukee Panthers are poised to take the Horizon League by storm. Don't miss out on your chance to experience the excitement of Milwaukee basketball. Great single game tickets are available now. Call the Panther ticket office or visit us online to buy your tickets today. Vote for the 2011 Milwaukee Women's Soccer Goal of the Year. Defensive Rice, and then drill it off the right, clean off the side pocket, it ricochets in. Howell is still there, now Gordon with a shot up and over the hand of Newsom. Can't do it, defender goes down, no call, shot and a goal! Hang it! Panthers have won the game! So far tonight, there hasn't been a lot of opportunities for the Panthers to get baskets, but the baskets they have gotten have been in the paint. Six of eight points coming for the Panthers in the paint, so they need to continue to attack. But James Harzman getting into it a little bit, Ryan Allen. It's been a nice attack so far. They just need more of them down low and not outside. Hey, by the way, the first airing of the Rob Jeter Show premiered tonight before the game on Sports 32. This week, there's a feature on the Panthers seniors, their experiences from the end of last season. You'll see an interview with Milwaukee Athletic Director Rick Costello. If you missed the premiere, it airs again after the game at 10.30, only on Sports 32. All right, so points in the paint. Got to start making some outside shots. Got to touch the post, certainly. That's what they're trying to do there. And there is a, a bit of a Venus flytrap description to their defense. You can see Wisconsin employing it. They will, they will hand you the 12-footer, tempt you into taking it. Tony Meyer for three. Thought he was smacked in the hand, no whistle. Again, they just don't make mistakes defensively. Their rotations are tight. They never put you in a position where you've got an open shot. And if you do, you better make it because there's not going to be many of them. And that's, I think, right now with what the Panther, Panthers are struggling with is they're just not used to being guarded so well for the entire shot clock. And you can't really simulate it. You can have your B team, your practice squad. You can. Work on it, and don't you know Rob Jeter did end his staff. Great effort by the freshman Evan Richard. Great effort. Yeah, that's just that's man to man. I, there's a mismatch there, and, and he didn't back down one bit. Was able to crab around the post on that entry pass. Bergeron's got to do a better job of holding him off. But hats off to Richards just for getting that ball knocked away, and Panthers able to come up with another turnover. We saw it a moment ago. Milwaukee not making enough shots to hang in this game. Not yet, anyway. Shot clock down 10. Arzma to Richard. 
Shot clock is at five. Tony Meyer, shot clock at three. Shot clock at one. Gully, three, off the mark. An empty possession there for the Panthers, and there's that defense again. Rob Jeter knew what he was dealing with coming in. Yeah, unfortunately, in that possession, I thought they had good ball movement. They did the right thing. Kalen Williams and James Harsma going in and out. But someone was a little bit timid. Someone's got to step up and want to make that shot. The Panthers aren't good late in the shot clock, whereas the Badgers, they don't panic late in the shot clock. That's just kind of their M.O. The Panthers need someone offensively to step up and, and not allow that shot clock to get that, that low. Well, it's there for Taylor. Instead, he shares the basketball, maybe lacking a teeny bit of confidence shooting it. Let's see. All the way. Rebound, Meyer. Taylor that time, plenty confident, forcing that one in there. Didn't get the roll. Defense, their signature. Wisconsin has held six of ten teams to under 45 points. Kalen, no roll. On the ground it goes. Back the other way. Taylor out front. Goalie. Johnny on the spot, it's batted around. Taylor, bucket. A bit of a break, but then Taylor takes advantage. He averages 12 points a game. Well, a break is right. I, Panthers were able to slow that break down a little bit in transition. Not enough guys getting back, and then, of course, when Wisconsin got their hands back on the ball, Taylor was sitting right underneath the basket, unguarded. Evan Richard trying to take matters into his own hands. Three of 17 from the floor for Milwaukee. Taylor, by the way, over 1,100 points in his Wisconsin career. Evan can jump. Richard with the rebound. One of the best jumpers outside of Allen. On the floor. It's been a long time. Quite a drought. And a turnover. And a foul. A foul of frustration. Not a wise foul. And Kayla will tell you that. The senior and... I can imagine this is what Wisconsin does as Wolf checks into the ball game. He'll be important, the junior Christian Wolf. And also checking in as well as Ryan Haggerty. And you can see the difference, Bo against the man who played for him at Parkside and won national championship for him at Parkside, Rob Jeter. They've got to wear a team like Milwaukee out mentally, to me anyway. Well, anybody, once they get up on a team, it's not that they take the ball or the air out of the ball. They just take all 30 seconds of the shot clock to do anything. And so when you get behind, it seems like years to try to catch up. And then especially with that defense that they play, it's almost impossible. Rebound, a second chance, offensive rebound. Effort batted, Panthers the other way. Trying to push the basketball. Gully, stop, pop, miss, out of bounds. And it's Badger basketball. So a slow start for Milwaukee. Just three of 17 on their home court from the hardwood. Wisconsin, in the meantime, already eight of 18 from the floor. They lead it by 10. Join head coach Sandy Botham and the Panther women's basketball team for another exciting season of Horizon League action. Great single game tickets are available now. It's an amazing price for amazing fun. Panther women's basketball. One team, one beat. Call the Panther ticket office or visit us online to purchase your tickets today. I'm a student athlete. Yes, student athlete. And I'm not alone. In the Horizon League, 731 student athletes had grade point averages of 3.2 or higher in the spring semester of 2011. 731. That's a big number. Student athletes. Seriously. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. Vote for the 2011 Milwaukee Men's Soccer Goal of the Year. going to strike it. This game is tied at a goal. 
it up. Head into the box, Banks! Oh my goodness, the Panthers have won the game! 18-8 is the score. Wisconsin flexing the defensive muscles out of the gates. Is certainly glad to have you with us in Milwaukee. We want to welcome our Madison viewers watching on TVW. I'm Darren Sutton. This is Adrian Tigard. And, and uh, for the former Panther, you're out there watching your team play. You have to make shots in games like this. And you have to give Wisconsin's defense credit. But missing shots, the young guys may be panicking a bit. UW-Milwaukee started 3 of 7. They're 0 for 11 in an 8-minute drought right now. Well, a team like the Badgers, they're not going to give you many good looks. So when you have an opportunity to get off a clean look, you just have to make it. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You've got to connect on any easy bucket or uh, opportunity they give you. And that's been the difference thus far. Well, Ryan Haggerty knows he has five fouls to give. He made sure he gave that one out firmly. Ryan Evans will go to the line. Evans, pretty good free throw shooter, 64% for a bigger guy who can jump, doesn't go to the line a ton. 28 attempts on the season, 18 to 28. And he makes the first. Evans had seven points and nine rebounds Saturday for Bo Ryan and his squad in a win over visiting UNLV. That was a 62-51 win over UNLV. And Evans makes them both. You wonder about Evans, why back from Arizona to Wisconsin, back to the Midwest, his parents both attended college in the Midwest of Minnesota. His father was a wrestler in the Big Ten. He opted for Wisconsin, leaving the Valley of the Sun behind. Bo Ryan's glad he did. Bo Ryan's glad his defense again smothers. Well, they do, and they're able to do that right now because the Panthers, in that scenario, haven't kicked it back out and hit a three. So their game plan is, is just to sink on the post and make it very difficult for them to score. That time, Ryan Allen, that's a bucket he usually gets. He, he wasn't even able to get the shot off. Very active offensively. Beautiful pass underneath. Converting for the bucket is Frank Kaminsky. He's a freshman out of Lyle, Illinois, Bennett Academy. And that's just what they do. They spread the court a little bit. They get guys moving around. They bring their, guy, uh, their bigs to the perimeter. They cut them through. That time, Frank Kaminsky getting a nice pass and able to finish. Haggerty that time takes advantage. Ryan Haggerty, as we mentioned, a role player on this club. Just points number 10 and 11 on the season for Ryan. And again, they came from within the paint. They, they just have to, they can't ignore that trend. They have to continue to get the ball in the paint. That's the only place they've been able to score against the Badgers. Milwaukee has not made a three-point attempt. Elevating and going to the line. Ben Brust got busy early, the sophomore guard. Coming around that screen, anytime you hand it off, and then if you see there, Russ just making a good individual play, and on this other end, again, coming off a screen and roll type scenario. Able to get in the lane, nice pass from the point guard for an easy two. All-state basketball player, as we mentioned, Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. And as Rob Wilson checks in, James Harzma back in the contest. Ryan Wolf tries to give, I should say, Christian Wolf. It's Ryan Haggerty and Christian Wolf, the junior from Polar, Wisconsin, sits down. Wisconsin making their free throws so far so good. This is a big important time for the Panthers here with five minutes left in the first half. They have to go on a run before closing out this first uh, half of the ball game because if they go into that locker room down certainly 14 or even 10, it's going to be tough to come back in the second half. They have to put on a run right now. Richard thought about a three, gives the ball back up. Shot clock is at 10 again. Kalen back to Evan. Evan for three. Just a good read there. Turned down that first opportunity to shoot the three. Got it back out to your point guard. Kalen doing a nice job of off the dribble, getting in the lane a little bit, getting it back out to Richard. He caught it, set, nailed it. Five minutes to go here in the first half. A stop and a bucket does not occur because he cannot hold on. Arzma grabs it. As you mentioned, it's tough, nearly impossible to go on a run, but even something like 6 nothing would give them some confidence. Yeah, absolutely, and, and the Badgers don't put up a ton of points themselves, so being down 10 to the Badgers, while they make it hard on you defensively, they're certainly not going to put up 75, 80 points on you in a hurry. So just keep the ball game close, keep yourself within striking distance, and you'll always be able to have a chance to get back in it. Arzma sees an opening, misses a layup. 
And he had earned that shot. That's a couple of times underneath Kayla Williams earlier, now James Harsman, where they've just come up short in shots. They'll tell you, I should make that shot. Well, they should. I think they're a little spooked right now by the Badgers team defense and by their length. Beautiful ball movement dumped underneath. And a bucket there by Josh Gasser. Port Washington, Port Washington High School, the Wisconsin Gatorade Player of the Year. So Gosser had that bucket. He's been a little bit quiet offensively. Gosser had 15 against Bradley back in November and 25 total points in the six games to follow. Well, right now the Panthers are trying to get the ball into the post and create some mismatch. Instead, Kayla Williams, as we often see him do off the dribble, a little bit of a hesitation and pull up. Big three for the Panthers. They need to kind of get some of this momentum back. And offense, good offense, creates good defense. So hopefully they can pick the momentum up on this end as well. Carrying the basketball. Turnover. Two turnovers. I mean, stop the presses. Jordan Taylor's turned the basketball over twice in this game. Usually two more than he has in any game. Milwaukee needs him to keep it up, and they need to pick it up. Who says Wednesdays have to be boring? With Pizza Hut's Wing Wednesdays, all you need is a handful of quarters to turn boring Wednesdays into 50 cent Wing Wednesdays. Time to cash in your change jar. Every wing, every Wednesday, only 50 cents each and only at your Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut delivers midnight or later. Humane Society of Indianapolis. The Special Olympics and the Terry Fox Run. Boys and Girls Club of Detroit. Special Olympics Canned Food Drive. Dayton, Ohio Children's Hospital. Special Olympics. Valparaiso, I need a hug program. At the Horizon League, we don't just say we care. We show it. Join the 2011 Horizon League champion Milwaukee Panthers and Coach of the Year Rob Jeter as they represent the black and gold. Your Milwaukee Panthers are poised to take the Horizon League by storm. Don't miss out on your chance to experience the excitement of Milwaukee basketball. Great single game tickets are available now. Call the Panther ticket office or visit us online to buy your tickets today. Inside touches create is inside out as you see the Panthers there with the three. And this one was just all Kalen Williams one on one. Late in the shot clock, we know he likes to do that with his little shimmy. But that's what they're going to need. Continue to go inside to get baskets so the defense collapses. And then when you get the ball back in the heart of that lane, kick it out for the easy three. Tonight's first half is brought to you in part by Nicholas Investments. Trust, integrity, performance, and proud sponsor of Panther Athletics. But they've got to have it. Simply put, they've got to make some three-point buckets. That's how they did it at DePaul. They had a huge who went on the road at DePaul. Guys like Gully, five of five from three. Milwaukee actually led in that game by 20 at half. They are two of eight from the floor outside of the arc so far in this contest. There are three minutes to go here in the first half. Hang with us, by the way, at halftime. Got an interview you won't want to miss. Kaylin Williams will go to the line. A conversation and a different spin. Look, it is player, it is coach, it is former assistant coach Rob Dieter with Bo Ryman. We're going to make it more contemporary, talk about some current issues these coaches deal with, like recruiting against one another on occasion. The Time Warner Cable Halftime Report. More control, more speed, more convenience with Time Warner Cable. Kaylin Williams misses his free throw. 49% free throw shooter on the year. The 
services in both, and you can just feel how precious every opportunity is. Certainly is. Did such a nice job of drawing that foul, earn those two free throws, and then to not connect on even one of them, it, it is definitely uh, disheartening. Something that certainly the coaching staff has worked on with him and in order for them to get back in this game, if they get to that line, as you see Kalen Williams there with a nice defensive rebound, to get back into this game, it, that's something they're going to have to do better than they have early on in the season. They're, they've got to connect on their free throws. Richard can elevate quickly. He's looking for some help there. He got stuck. Now he can go up with a jumper from 12, 15 feet. Evan Richard very quickly. Parsma fights for position underneath. Can he make this layup? Is it there? You go. Yeah, nice. That, that play was set up by Kalen Williams. He understands where the mismatches are. And that time, Harzma has a couple other possessions, has had a mismatch. I believe it was Gosser or, or Bruss that was defensively trying to guard him, and that's a mismatch. Go to him, get him the ball, let him go to work, and let him get an easy two. Big long rebound. Evan Richard grabs it after Bergren with the miss. Crowd bubbling a bit now. They're hoping for a little bit of a sprint into the locker room by these Panthers. There's Evan, that's what I was talking about. And it's unbelievable. If you watch a lot of the, the Panthers play, or if you watch the Badgers play, how much Evan Richard is like Gosser or Bruss. He's just like them in that they can both curl around the screens, elevate straight up, straight back down. Beautiful finish. He brings athleticism to this, uh, this lineup, no doubt about it. Big basket. And he's just a freshman, redshirted last year. It's a 12-4 run for the Panthers right now. This would hurt. It's for three. Firm. Tipped. Out of bounds. And I think he made the right call. I think the official there was on it, and he made the right call. A lot of hands were on that ball. Looked like the last one to touch it was wearing a gray uniform. You know he thinks that was the right call. One minute to go in the first half. Well, they just control themselves, even the big guys and their body and their movement so well. Long three, got it. Boy, what an answer. Just when you think you're making a run, Jared Bergren drains a three-pointer. Just textbook offense. Anyone that's a student of the game or a lot of coaches that may be watching, you watch your guys move the ball around like that, like they did around the perimeter, turn down shots. Finally find the right guy, and he connects on the shot. Just beautiful offense by the, the Badgers. So the ups and downs that Bo Ryan's team defense has created. Milwaukee started 3 of 7. Then they drifted away 0 for 11 from the floor. They're 5 of their last 8 now, so making a few more. Just tough to go on runs. It's tough to go on runs, but as I mentioned earlier, is that the, they're only down nine, right? I mean, arguably, this is probably one of the worst scoring halves they've had yet this season. I think in uh, in Chicago, down at DePaul last week, they had 45 points in the first half. So certainly they're struggling from the field, but the fact that the Badgers themselves only have 29 points, by no means is this game out of reach. They've got a long ways to go. Time Warner Cable halftime report. More control, more speed, more convenience with Time Warner Cable. Keep it right here. Milwaukee averages 65 points a game. 65. Wisconsin, 68. It's just that Wisconsin doesn't give up any points. 45 points a game. No shot clock. So you're hoping really honestly for a stop. You just want to stop. A bucket would be a bonus if you're Milwaukee. And that's why, Bo, uh, I'm sorry, Rob Jeter came out in this, this zone. He just wanted to throw a little bit of a damper in whatever that game plan was that they came out of that timeout with. It's a bucket, three seconds. It's a double-digit lead. One second. Long heave comes up short. A halftime of ups and downs for Milwaukee at home. They trail the number 14 team in the day. Second half brought to you by Orthopedic Hospital of Wisconsin. An uncommon focus on you. Milwaukee again in their home grays tonight. Gully with the stop pop. Meyer right behind after the tip. Tony misses. And a second chance after the offensive rebound. Certainly that's one that you just had to come back down and then Tony went right back up with it. He needs to go towards the basket. He can't go up straight vertical with the basket. He's got to be strong, go towards the basket and finish with some strength. 
and not give these guys an opportunity to come down with a defensive rebound. Tony didn't have a point in the first half. He was 0 of 3 from the floor. Paris Gully was nothing of 6 from the floor. A three-pointer right out of the gates for Jordan Taylor. Well, a good start for Wisconsin, certainly with that run they made at the end of the first half. And then to boot, this first basket comes from Jordan Taylor, who we talked about struggling from the perimeter. That's a big three for him to start this second half. Looks like they got underneath the foul on Ryan Evans. Now it's Brent Bruzewitz, as you see Taylor right there. Evan Richard, the head of the X Factor, will check back in. Gully sits down. Bob Jeter just trying, trying to find something, some sort of a mix that works for his club. Kalen Williams, two of seven from the floor. Allen, one of three. No turnover there, nearly a turnover. A minute has disappeared here in the first half. 34-20 the score, Wisconsin leads it. Arsma asks for the basketball, and there's a reason why. Well, one of the positive things about that movement they do, as you'll see in this replay, they come off a screen. And on the screen and roll, there's a, a there's a switch where Gosser switches over to to Harnsma, and then there's obviously a mismatch. And while they were battling for position a little bit, James just with his big arms and elbows got Gosser in the head a little bit. And I think they're going to review this. Uh, I think NCAA has a rule that anytime there's a elbow above the shoulder, whether it was intentional or not, they review it just to to make sure that it's not, which clearly this won't be. So. Looks like the basket will stand and just incidental contact. The officials are taking a look at it right now, as you mentioned. They're seeing what you're seeing at home. Definitely no intent there. No intent at all there from Harsma. They continue to watch. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Young man out of Racine. The inadvertent elbow to the head of a young man out of Port Washington. Well, this is all set up by that good action, that screen and roll. I like the play call by Rob Jeter. Richard doing a nice job of jump stopping and then pivoting, going right to that mismatch. And Harz Money, all day long, he's going to win that battle, certainly even without Gosser getting hit in the face. That's some movement that they could continue to go through, create those mismatches, but then they have to make sure that they exploit them and get that ball to the guy with the advantage. Looked like he carried there just a moment ago, Gosser, but he didn't. Backing it in and earning a chance to go to the line is Bergren, Jared Bergren, the junior out of Princeton, Minnesota. First personal foul on Tony Meyer, first team foul on Milwaukee. Tony requesting a bit of an explanation there. He talk about Bo Ryan when he was the coach here at Milwaukee. One of the early matchups between Wisconsin and Milwaukee. Bo Ryan was coaching on the other side. Bo Ryan recruited players like you. It was Bo Ryan that passed the torch to Bruce Pearl that then passed it to Rob Jeter. A creative group, but a group that has built this program to where it is. It, a it absolutely is. I think when Bruce Pearl came in and had a lot of that success. What people didn't understand were the majority, or maybe not the majority, but a good handful of the guys that were there were brought in by Bo Ryan before he left for Wisconsin. So he, he definitely left his mark on this program, no doubt about it. All the way, he'll go to the line, Allen leaping. Nothing wrong with that effort. And a chance to put points on the board with the clock stopped. Well, this is important. I talked about it at halftime with somebody that they just weren't finishing around the basketball with confidence. That time he attacked the rim. He didn't lay up some floater where Bergering can get to it and deflect. He went up and he tried to finish with strong, uh, with a strong dunk there. And so certainly uh, a nice move by him. But now certainly getting to the free throw line and connecting on the free throws is, is as important, if not more. Miss. And so the Panthers continue to struggle from the floor. They continue to struggle from the line. They're two of eight from the free throw line. Meantime, Wisconsin a perfect six of six. 14 point lead. And this is keeping the home crowd out of it too right now. Backing in, did he clear a bit with that arm? Foul is called. A curious foul to say the least. We'll see if we get another look at it where the foul occurred. 
Foul was on Ryan Allen. And he's banging bodies with Ryan Evans. We know that he hasn't been shy. When he played textbook defense, you see here Ryan Evans dropping down, pivot, pivot, and on the follow through, because it was such a good defense, Ryan Allen was right there, and on that follow through, Ryan Evans brought his hand down, and that's what the referee called, but a tough call, certainly for either way. Uh, you'd like to think that Ryan Allen played just about as good a defense as he could have. You can see contact, you can see where he got it. Certainly hard to see it in live action. As Evans bangs home the second, and now you get to the point, it's 15. You start thinking to yourself, if you're the Panthers, we had better get something going and get it going now. Plenty of basketball, but a team that just doesn't give up a ton of points. James Harzma will go to the line. Harzma has been a wonderful addition to this program. He transferred in from Evansville. Had to sit out last year because of the transfer, but he has been good for 11 points, eight rebounds, and a brand of basketball. I'll tell you, you could even see it last year when he was sitting out. It's a firm and physical brand. This is his free throw. It is, and, and one of the things he does as well with his presence on the court is he makes Tony Meyer better. And Kyle Helm, when he's in the game, he makes him better. And they challenge one another, but the three of them collectively are far more better as individuals when they're all in the game than they are when one's not, one's not available to play. They feed off one another. They all bring something different to the table offensively and defensively. So we just have to get Kyle Kelm back in the court, certainly on the defensive end, helping rotate defensively and, and, and to stop a guy like Jared Berger and from getting an easy basket. As he did just a moment ago, as Adrian pointed out. Adrian Tiger, my name is Darren Sutton. Wherever you're watching in the great state of Wisconsin, including in Madison. Glad to have you with us tonight as Harzma muscles in. He's got seven points tonight. He's got three rebounds to go along with. His three of four Harzma is from the floor. 16.50 to go. Allen left his feet. Firm rebound. Kalen Williams, it's knocked away, but Harzma grabs hold of it. Another opportunity here for the Panthers to chip away at this lead. I'd like to continue to see some of that screen and roll action, try to get the mismatch, get that ball back into Harzma and let him attack. There's James, there's two. Harzma adding to that point total. And there's some pushing and shoving going on underneath. Nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. Not when the other guy that's guarding you is 6'10 and probably outweighs you by 20 pounds. A nice offensive move there, just using some shoulder fakes and then ultimately an up and under to get that easy basket. Kaden Williams, unhappy with the call. Hands out by his side. Again, he battles the emotion. What do you think there, partner? A lot of acting. That's probably what got the rough referee to call the whistle, but probably something more times than not you just let play on. Ball underneath. He's been busy. Evans will go to the line. The whistle's really starting to blow now. Second personal foul. Fourth team foul. So far a foul a minute being called on the Panthers. Well, certainly not a, a way you want to start uh, the defensive end here. But the defense was good. It was the right thing. All he did was chest up and he got his hands up high, which is something both Coach Ryan and Co Coach Jeter preach to their players. Unfortunately, for Harzma on that opportunity, because his hands were up straight high, he ended up getting a little contact with Ryan Evans, who now is putting together a, a really nice offensive uh, outing tonight. Yeah, Evans having a huge night. He's got 13 points. Evans has five rebounds, five of six from the line. 14-point lead again. Harzma's really trying to will himself for this team. He really, truly is, and there's been an effort that has not been seen really by anyone outside of Harzma. Kind of shaking off maybe a little bit of nerves and fear, realizing and these guys put their shorts on just like I do. Join head coach Sandy Fotham and the Panther women's basketball team for another exciting season of Horizon League action. Great single game tickets are available now. It's an amazing price for amazing fun. Panther women's basketball. One team, one beat. Call the Panther Ticket Office or visit us online to purchase your tickets today.
This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. Vote for the 2011 Milwaukee Men's Soccer Goal of the Year. Langford's going to strike it. This game is tied to the goal. Keep it up. Head in the box. Banks. Oh, my goodness. The Panthers have won the game. Last season, Green Bay senior captain Kayla Tetchlog led her Phoenix to a 34-2 record and the Horizon League's first ever berth in the NCAA tournament Sweet 16. But the most important speech of Tetchlog's year wasn't a pep talk. It was this one. I am proud to stand before you on this momentous day in our lives. The Horizon League, where students are also athletes, not the other way around. Brought to you by Nicholas Investments, Trust Integrity Performance, and proud sponsor of Panther Athletics. Green Bay rolling at home against Michigan Tech. Later on tonight, UIC is at Oregon State out west. That game not yet underway. James Harzma has kind of put his presence out front of the Panthers right now. Well, he's just being aggressive. Uh, we talked about it coming out of that halftime, is that someone had to step up and just become aggressive and find baskets, create their own opportunities. And so far this half, He's done so on a number of occasions in a number of different ways. Now he's got to step up and get to the free throw line and finish him when he gets fouled. The young man from St. Catharines High School in Racine, where all they did was win state titles when he was there. Boy, this Wisconsin catching a break tonight because Milwaukee has just been simply put awful from the line. You just can't do this and hope to hang in games. Three of 11 now. Three of 12 from the line. Meyer and Evans, crowd wanted an up and over the back, alternating possession. It's a jump ball, Wisconsin basketball. Simply put, you just can't miss so many free throws. Yeah, the margin for error against a team like Wisconsin for a number of reasons is very minimal, and free throw shooting is one of them. You just have to make your attempts that you get, and, and so far the Panthers haven't. It's something they've struggled with all season, and uh, it's going to take them to be near perfect from the free throw line to pull off any sort of upset against a team like Wisconsin. 14 points is the deficit. Still scrapping and fighting to try and get something going. Evans steps back, will go to the line. He'll attempt to make it a three-point play. What a night he is having, Ryan Evans. Well, we talked about James Harzma taking over a little bit offensively. That's exactly what Ryan Evans does. He loves the square up on the top of the key or on the wing. Jab step, driving to his left. It's in the scouting report. If he drives to his left, he's going to pull up. That time, Harzma not able to close out on him. Picked up the foul. Evans able to make the basket and the free throw. Where's the fade as his haircut, but there is nothing fading about his numbers tonight. Again, the young man from Arizona. Has been incredible tonight, and Evans. 16 points. It's a career high for the young man. Meyer, three, contested there by Evans. Richard would love to shoot it. Evan asking for the ball. Tony instead can't get it to go. Again, a career high for Ryan Evans with his 16 points. Up and under. Evans is there. He's got the ball again. And a timeout is called. Evans heads back to the bench again. Five of seven from the floor. 16 points. And we will step aside. Join head coach Sandy Botham and the Panther women's basketball team for another exciting season of Horizon League action. Great single game tickets are available now. It's an amazing price for amazing fun. Panther women's basketball. One team, one beat. Call the Panther ticket office or visit us online to purchase your tickets today.
This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. Vote for the 2011 Milwaukee Men's Soccer Goal of the Year. Langford's going to strike it. This game is tied at a goal. Spit up. Head in the box. Banks! Oh my goodness, the Panthers have won the game! Last season, Green Bay senior captain Kayla Tetzlog led her Phoenix to a 34-2 record and the Horizon League's first ever berth in the NCAA tournament Sweet 16. But the most important speech of Tetzlog's year wasn't a pep talk. It was this one. I am proud to stand before you on this momentous day in our lives. The Horizon League, where students are also athletes, not the other way around. Join head coach Sandy Fotham and the Panther women's basketball team for another exciting season of Horizon League action. Great single game tickets are available now. It's an amazing price for amazing fun. Panther women's basketball. One team, one beat. Call the Panther ticket office or visit us online to purchase your tickets today. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. That time, with five seconds left, the last time it was a very, very close contest. Can they do it again? You remember that one. I remember that one, unfortunately. But yeah, absolutely, they, they could do it again. They, it's not that they've played great offensively and, and they still can't get over the hump. They haven't played well at all offensively, so it's really in their hands. If they can find a way to step up down the stretch, they can close this gap no problem. Another shot that is missed underneath, 11 of 34, 32% for the Panthers. Again, just to pass along three-point numbers, two of 10, and free throw numbers, three of 12. That's what we're talking about, just finding a way to get hot. On Saturday, it was Milwaukee visiting Northern Iowa. That was a 16-point loss. The only two losses this year for Wisconsin. Marquette at home and on the road in North Carolina. Horace Mann ends up with a bucket. Reaching now or never stage, I would imagine. Richard up under. Beautiful by Evan Richard. Well, a nice job in transition to attack the basket. It looked for a, a second there that they were going to pull the ball out, even though they had the advantage. Evan Richard finding a lane and being able to get right to the basket. That is one area that they may be able to get some of these points back is in transition. When it's all said and done and Richard leaves this program in Milwaukee, he will have done some very memorable things. You can already see it. It's been a memorable night for Evans, but a miss. Nothing yet from Tony Meyer offensively. And Horsma continues to battle underneath and a whistle. I like what they've done here over the last few possessions is they've started to put the pressure on the defense. They've tried to put Wisconsin in bad positions defensively through transition defense. That time, Kaminsky trying to get around on the post, picking up the foul. They're, they're initiating the action right now, and it's working out well for him. It, it's getting him some easier looks. Kaminsky with the foul, his second. He sits down. Bergman comes into the ball game. Yeah, a Tony Meyer or a Kalen Williams can get hot at some point. A rebound for Evans. Adding to his total, he's got eight boards to go along with those 16 points. On the line, the step, and back the other way. Disapproving, not enjoying that call, Jared Bergeron. Bergeron last year played in the contest against Milwaukee. He played nine minutes, didn't score at all. And Bo Ryan hot. Oh, letting him have a little bit there. I think he wanted a hip check, a little push out of bounds. 
I think that's what Bergeron was a little upset about, too. He understands that he went out of bounds, but what he was telling the referee is, I got helped out of bounds, spinning to the baseline here, and maybe a little bit of a hip check. But nonetheless, I don't think when you're 6'10", you're going to get that call very often. Harzma a little bit lower to the ground, center of gravity, doing a nice job using the baseline as an extra defender and uh, able to force Berger out of bounds. You can see Bo Ryan, how he has handled what some would say is an equal in a program in Marquette with regard to the level of basketball, and then those that are known as mid-majors. In Milwaukee and Green Bay, though, Bo said, look, don't call him a mid-major. Last time I checked, Butler has been in the last two Final Fours. So he chooses a man who coached at the mid-major level in Bo Meyer. Bo Ryan, I should say, a three-pointer. Tony Meyer jumped into my conscience because he was about to drain a three. All the way, a miss. Meyer tries to grab it. Can him back the other way. Evan Richard, three-pointer. And that's beautiful, out of transition. Very hard to get matched up for a defense. Dribbling at the defender is what Kalen Williams did there. Evan Richard so circled back behind him for the, the handoff. Evan Richard coming up with a big shot. This is only a nine-point game with over 10 minutes left. They're absolutely in this game. Crowd comes alive. Harisma, a block. A block is called underneath on James Harzma. Kalen Williams stands next to the official as if to say he had set his feet. This might be worth another look when we have a chance. But first, Milwaukee making a run at things, down by nine. Sure, I would like to win a championship. Yes, I would like to be named all league. But when my college career is over, here's what my time in the Horizon League needs to be about. Earning my degree. Earning my degree. Earning my degree. The Horizon League, where students are also athletes, not the other way around. Join head coach Sandy Fotham and the Panther women's basketball team for another exciting season of Horizon League action. Great single game tickets are available now. It's an amazing price for amazing fun. Panther women's basketball. One team, one beat. Call the Panther ticket office or visit us online to purchase your tickets today. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. Who says Wednesdays have to be boring? With Pizza Hut's Wing Wednesdays, all you need is a handful of quarters to turn boring Wednesdays into 50-cent Wing Wednesdays. Time to cash in your change jar. Every wing, every Wednesday, only 50 cents each, and only at your Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut delivers midnight or later. Four fouls on James Harzman. When you're on the road, you're not used to getting calls. Maybe go your way. This was a break for Wisconsin. Well, textbook defense came over from the help side. You see the tape on the ground that they call it a halo. He had to be outside of that halo. Both feet planted. They're established for a clear second. And that's why you see Rob Jeter's reaction. And that is an unfortunate call because not only was it the wrong call, but it also puts James Harzma, who has gotten the Panthers going here on the bench with his fourth foul. And so Christian Wolf, the young man, the junior out of Polar, Wisconsin, will look to fill the shoes that have gotten larger in the second half of James Harzma. As Jared Bergman, the beneficiary of that call, will go to the line and shoot two. Harzma looked like anyway on our pictures that he had established clear settling in. 
He looked like he was a foundation on a home ready to take a blow. He did take a blow. But instead he was whistled for the foul. One of two and there's Wolf grabbing the rebound. Keep an eye on him. It's his opportunity to play some big minutes. He had big minutes Wolf did last year. 19 at Butler in a win. Just 2.3 rebounds but they were big minutes. Meyer with the three. And that was made possible. That was just a good play call coming out of that missed free throw. Coming down setting two high screens up top. One of those guys going with Evan Richard on that curl. And Tony Meyer popped wide open and was able to hit. Glad to have you with us. Milwaukee making a run. Glad to have our viewers in Madison as well. But Milwaukee's got to continue to stay on this run. It has been all Wisconsin, but maybe that's going to change. Starting to get a break or two going their way. Not a call, but a break. Three straight three-pointers made by Milwaukee. They've had to have it. Fires it over back to Wolf. Tony underneath, clears with his elbow, earns that bucket. Tony Myers heating up. And again, set up by Kayla Williams. They did it earlier in the game with Harzma. They got the mismatch. They were patient. That time, Tony Meyer had the mismatch, was able to connect on a bucket. The Panthers now on a 13-1 run. Ten minutes to go. Baseline. Wolf contest. He did his job there. And right now, that's as much as you need from Wolf. In for Harzma, who has four fouls. Five-point lead. As Adrian pointed out, a big run now for Milwaukee. 13-1. And they're trying to exploit another mismatch. As you see, Taylor ended up on, uh, on Tony Meyer. They're trying to get him the ball in the post, which he has it now. Let's see if he's able to go to work. Meyer. We'll go to the line. Count it. I told you they could come back, and they're making good decisions. That's how they've gotten themselves back into this game, patient on offense, knowing that there's been mismatches. That time it was Tony Meyer with a guard on him, and again, Tony Meyer, this time with uh, Taylor on him, able to spin, go up over Taylor. Taylor fouls. Bucket goes in, chance for a three-point play. And as the whistle was blown, the foul was committed. Meyer lost what looked like a contact lens, so he heads to the bench to get that right. The vision has been pretty good lately. He doesn't want to mess with his vision because Tony started about as cold as anybody could on a night when you and I talked about it. He had to show up for this to be a ball game. Well, absolutely, because he can stretch the defense with his three-point shot. And what he's done here is it started as that, but now he's gone inside. And, uh, yeah, he certainly warmed up. Good thing that the Badgers, although they were up, it was never by too many where the Panthers couldn't get back in this. He was 0 for 3, then 4 of 6 is what he has done to follow. Meyer talks it in. Get in there, he says, and they need to get more in there because Milwaukee's struggling from the line. 16 to 1 is the run. And as you notice, good offense leads to good defense. You see the defensive intensity really picked up by the Panthers here in this possession. Wolf with that big body doing a nice job fighting. But it's about 30 seconds. That's what the Badgers are so good at is they play a full shot clock. You can't let them get anything. Off the mark. Great box out by Wolf. Kalen for three. Off the mark. And Kalen did not allow things to settle in. Emotion grabbed the best of him there. Well, a little bit of a heat check for Kalen Williams there. Certainly feeding off the momentum and the energy in this building. Maybe not the shot they wanted. Had it gone down, it would have been a great decision. But because it didn't, I'm sure Rob Jeter would have liked for him to pull that back out. Boy, pretty. To his left. Gosser with a big answer back. Port Washington, Wisconsin. The Wisconsin Gatorade Player of the Year, just a sophomore. Yeah, he's such a good athlete, six foot three, sophomore, going to his off hand there at oh. a time where his team needs a big basket. It's a big time play by Josh Gossett. Rob Jeter calls a timeout, short timeout. Yeah, Gossett had six points and eight rebounds. He stands six three. He had eight rebounds in the win over UNLV. Finally, some respectability for the Panthers with regard to field goal percentage. They've started to, to hit again. 
Well, in a game where there's limited amount of opportunities, to increase that number from a percentage standpoint, really all you need to do is get four or five stringed together in a row, and it's going to shoot that percentage up. Certainly the, the guy that's been a key to that has been Tony Meyer. Now he's arrived now. He's on the scene. What have you seen? Well, better late than never. Obviously, we talked about his late start, uh, but really just getting it going from the perimeter on that first three, and then those mismatches off screens and rolls, a couple times finding himself, once with Frost guarding him, another time with Jordan Taylor. And really, the, the, the smart thing that the Panthers have done is they've been patient to get them the ball in positions where a guy like Tony Meyer can do that. It was back in December of 1992, December the 12th, and it was in Madison at the UW Fieldhouse, and it was the only Milwaukee win in this series. 27 losses, one win. And you can see what has gone on from the floor in this half. Wolf's got his chance. A chance to shine, but couldn't get the roll. Good hard fight underneath. He's got to keep taking that shot. Oh, that was a good shot. I mean, those are the, the ones they work on as a post player, going over that left shoulder as being a righty is second nature to him. A good shot, continue to do it if he gets another one. Jordan Taylor wanted a call, didn't get it. Well, here's this mismatch. This is where it was created. The Badgers like to switch a lot because they feel like their guys can guard everybody. And that time, switch over to Tony Meyer. <laughs> was not able to connect on a three. Could not connect. Wolf couldn't grab the offensive rebound. Again, four fouls on James Harzma, Christian Wolf, the junior, who transferred in from Florida Gulf Coast out of Polar High School. He's got a chance to really make a memory. Kalen Williams getting frustrated with the contact with Taylor right now. Long three-point attempt. Wolf fights, grabs it. Bergeron is whistled for the foul. Third personal foul. The Panthers have made a ball game of it. They are down by four. Only once in 28 times have they knocked them out of their seats with an upset. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. Accountability. Service. Learning. Competition. At the horizon, victories are important. But values mean more. Vote for the 2011 Milwaukee Men's Soccer Goal of the Year. Langford's going to strike it. This game is tied to the goal. Keep it up. Head into the box. Banks. Oh, my goodness. The Panthers have won the game. Join the 2011 Horizon League champion Milwaukee Panthers and Coach of the Year Rob Jeter as they represent the black and gold. Your Milwaukee Panthers are poised to take the Horizon League by storm. Don't miss out on your chance to experience the excitement of Milwaukee basketball. Great single game tickets are available now. Call the Panther ticket office or visit us online to buy your tickets today. 47-43 here and join us as well for the Dennis Krause Show. One-on-one -on -one interviews getting you set for the Milwaukee Bucks season. Basketball is back. The show airs tonight at 11, Wednesday at 4 and 10 o'clock and throughout the week only on Sports 32 getting you set. Our Army ROTC defender of the game, Milwaukee Army ROTC excellence and leadership.
take the lead. We'll give it tonight to, to Caden Williams doing all he can defensively on Jordan Taylor, who, by the way, Jordan is three of his last 21, including the game in UNLV from the floor. Three of his last 21. So he's been human, Taylor has, in this contest tonight. The reason Kalen received that honor, Taylor is 3 of 11 in this contest. Well, he struggled early on in this season. I think he's getting used to being the focal point as the opposing team's sure. uh, scouting report last year with John Luer and Ninkaville. Those guys took a little pressure off him, whereas this year, everybody's focusing on him and him only. Mr. Wolf. Drops in what is his first free throw attempt of the season. Well, it's nice that someone's been able to step up, come off the bench, and that's why I love opportunities like this for guys that, that don't play a lot. Oh, boy! Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. A one-point game. Right into the hands of Tony Meyer. Well, they've got the Badgers on the heels a little bit now, so it starts on defense. You can't give them anything easy. Then you have to block out and rebound. And if they can continue to do that, they'll find themselves in scoring position. Evans with a career night, gives the ball up. Rebound, Kalen, after the miss by Gosser. Hiding behind Wolf there, bringing the ball up. Evan Richard, athletic, can go to work at any moment. Well, what they're trying to do again is here to get the ball to Tony Meyer. He's fighting, he's got Ryan Evans on him. Thinks there's a little bit of a mismatch. He was going quite hard on trying to get the position to get that post entry. Is there anything there for Kalen underneath? Too firm. Too firm. Out of bounds. Badger ball. We don't always see Tony Meyer really get inside and scrape. And that's not a criticism. His game is from the outside. His game can be deep shots. He's needed now to do so, and he's doing it. Absolutely, he has stood up. I, I think uh, seeing Harzman do it kind of motivated him to get in there and mix it up, knowing that that was kind of, so far tonight, the chink in the armor for the Badgers and their defense. They've been a little susceptible inside. He's done a nice job of trying to expose that. Tony's got 13 points and six rebounds. Whistle. And Bergwin will go to the line. Christian Wolf is second personal. Seventh team foul, so both teams firmly into the bonus for the rest of the way. Eight of 11 on the season from the free throw line for Bergen. Bergen had 14 points and five rebounds at North Carolina on the road. Now it was a loss for Wisconsin, but a, a big game for the young man. And he played very well. I, mean, I watched that game, the stats, don't tell the whole story. The, the way he moved and his ability to, to just put the ball on the floor and get to the basket is, is incredible. Tony lowers that shoulder. We're tied! How about that? You asked me about seven minutes ago if they could get back in this game, and it started with defense and, of course, making some baskets. But they've fought to get to this point. Let's hope they didn't use all of their energy just to get even. They've got to keep pressing on uh, on the Badgers and keep initiating everything. Out of bounds. Evan hoping to have knocked it off of a Badger. But Bo Ryan's Wisconsin Badgers have their hands full. Rob Jeter. Rob, his 110th career victory should he pull the upset and one he'll never forget. Sure not. Now, mind you, this run they've put together has been done with James Harzma for the most part sitting on the bench. It'll be a tough decision for Rob with only four and a half minutes left. Do you bring him back in this game or do you just play with the guys that got you there? Wow! A huge three pointer by Jared Bergren as the shot clock was expiring. Boy, talk about a punch right back. Yeah, that's a backbreaker. You don't expect the 6'10 guy to be taking the three at the buzzer. Certainly, the Panthers with a good defensive stand, that's what you want is a big man stepping out, taking a buzzer beater. But unluckily for them, Bergeron's just that good. Allen, Anderson home! Ryan Allen had a slip by his defender. And Allen, with the ups, puts it away. Points in the paint. Milwaukee has taken advantage, and that includes guys like Allen and the leaping ability. Unbelievable ball handling and self-control. Taylor, a little bit lucky, too, turns it into a bucket. 
Well, and that's where he's at his best is when he gets in the heart of that lane, jumps, jump stops, spin, he either dishes to another player, either back out or within the, uh, the lane itself. And if he doesn't have that, he rises and shoots. Traveling violation, Richard. Hope he's all right. Grabbing and grimacing at, looks like the shin. Let's hope he's okay. We'll keep an eye on him. We'll step aside. It's been a fun one tonight, Mr. Jeter. A lot of fun. Vote for the 2011 Milwaukee Women's Soccer Goal of the Year. Defense to Rice. And then drilled it off the right, clean off the side pocket. It ricochets in. Howell is still there. Now Gordon with a shot up and over the hand of Newsom. Can't do it. Defender goes down. No call. Shot and a goal. Take it. Panthers have won the game. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. I'm a student athlete. Yes, student athlete. And I'm not alone. In the Horizon League, 731 student athletes had grade point averages of 3.2 or higher in the spring semester of 2011. 731. That's a big number. Student athletes. Seriously. Certainly anxious on both sides. Kyle Kelm sitting this one out with a shoulder injury. Good for five rebounds a game and a lot of points inside. Somehow, though, they have found those points when you didn't think they would. Look at the difference there. Well, certainly, if you were to come into this game and said, okay, the Panthers are down 10 points in the second half, where are they going to get back into this game? You would automatically think it was going to be from the three-point line, but it's been the exact opposite. They've done a lot of their damage in the paint, and that's even without Kyle Kelm, who is a huge help to them. Uh, and certainly it makes that threesome inside between him and uh, Harzma and Meyer very, very strong. All right, so Rob Jeter's rolling his dice now. Harzma has four fouls. He's back in the game. They're going really big and physical with Wolf, with Harzma, with Meyer. They're going to use the inside a lot offensively. I like the call. It's just now defensively, can you guard guys like Brost and Gosser and certainly Taylor? And a whistle is called. Allen not happy with the call. And a very sensitive official there comes in and scolds Ryan Allen. It's an emotional game. Understanding, I understand you have to respect the officials, but the officials have to understand for these young players, this is a really emotional game. Uh, it's an emotional game, and, and it's an emotional pivotal time of the game. This coming off the ball, I believe, with Jordan Taylor trying to cut down the lane, and he just... He, he attracts a lot of that attention by flailing his arms and, and getting into the chest of, uh, of Ryan Allen there. So certainly I'm not saying that it shouldn't have been called. I just don't know if that's the right time and place for that call. Right answer. If you're a Wisconsin fan, it's now a five-point lead. Right or wrong call. Put yourself in the shoes of the young player. That's the job of the more mature person on the floor. 55-50, Tony for three, well off the mark. Bounces around, Wolf with the miss. He was underneath, but he couldn't get it to go. Caught off, off guard a little bit, he was by that, that miss a little long by Tony Meyer, not catching much iron. And it just really fell in the lap by Christian Wolf, and he found himself too far underneath the basket. That's an opportunity they'd love to have back. Evans having a career night. Backs in, Meyer, little hip check. 
Knocks him out of there along the baseline. Off the mark, Allen. Under three minutes to go, the Panthers down five. Well, I'd like to see some uh, pick and roll. Uh, I'm sure Rob's calling for it. Some pick and roll to create one of these switches. They're, that's where they're going to get that mismatch. And then they're able to go inside and post or inside out, whatever it may be. And that's how they were getting those easy buckets before. A moment ago, Meyer nearly slipped. Would have been a travel. Ten on the shot clock. Galen active. No whistle. Rolling with the basketball onto the ground. Milwaukee ball. Shot clock is at five, though. Well, with five seconds, they're certainly going to have to have some sort of play call. It's going to be one or the other. Set up a play call, maybe staggered screens to get a guy coming off those two screens, trying to get open for a, a perhaps a three or one of those guys slipping to the basket. Otherwise, it's going to be get it in, get it back to Kalen Williams, let him go one on one. Kalen, three, nowhere close, batted around. And a shot clock violation. Wisconsin basketball. Two minutes, 11 seconds to go. And hard to explain, Hush comes over the building if only for a moment. Well, I think that, that three that Berger and hit at the end of the, the end of the shot clock is going to weigh in much bigger than we thought. So Green Bay are her Nicholas Investments Horizon League update a win over Michigan Tech. Under two minutes, Bo Ryan's boys. Taking advantage of the clock now. Down to 10 is the shot clock. All the way underneath the stop by Allen. Milwaukee, by the way, scoring 50 points has done something very few teams have done against Wisconsin this year. Score about 45. Six of 10 have been 45 or below. They got this mismatch again here with Russ trying to guard Tony Meyer, and they're just going to have to try to find a way. The Badgers are doing a good uh, job on the weak side protecting that matchup. Halen all the way, streaks along the baseline. Three-point deficit. Timeout, Milwaukee. So back in December of 92, when it was that rare, rare upset victory, the only victory, it was Milwaukee beating Wisconsin 77-72. That night, Craig Green had 23 points. Mark Mitchell had 16 points and seven assists. I would imagine somewhere they're keeping a watchful eye on this contest. Michael Finley, NBA fame, a very long and successful NBA career. They shut down Michael Finley that night. Finley was 0 for 5 from outside of the arc, but it takes a night where you have to shut down a Finley. You have to take a guy like Taylor and make sure he doesn't get any big shots late against you. Well, those are going to be the guys that are going to get the opportunities. The Badgers, no doubt, want the ball in, in Taylor's hands here down the stretch. The Panthers have done a great job defensively, just chesting up, staying down. Uh, that last possession, they put Taylor in a really bad position to try to make that basket, and then they rebounded. They've got to do that here in the last minute if they want to come out of here with a win. Shot clock is at 10. Long three. Ouch, that will hurt. A huge shot. Jordan Taylor, I have arrived, he says. I made the big shot. Awfully timely by Jordan Taylor to maybe get out of his slump a little bit from three, and that's just big time. Kalen, three off the mark. Wolf will fight for it, tangling on the ground. And a jump ball, alternating possession, Panther ball. Again, Taylor, a preseason first team All-American, one of the best guards in the land, had been quiet the last two games until that. Now that's what he likes to do. He likes to rock with the ball in his left hand. Sometimes he takes it to the right, sometimes he'll go to the left, but he's best when he pulls up, especially in a critical moment. A big shot from a big time player. Taylor moves into double digits, 14 points. His biggest points have come late in this ball game. You can see three point shooting, a bit of an edge to Wisconsin. But I'll tell you what, Jordan Taylor, more than 1,000 points in his career. This is a young man that has scored 39 in a game. 
And he just delivered what looked like the knockout blow. Perhaps it could be, but down the stretch here, the Badgers haven't done a great job uh, connecting on free throws. So certainly the Panthers, after this next offensive possession, are going to have to put the Badgers on the free throw line. And that's really going to be the difference maker. If they're able to connect, they'll put this game away. If they're not, they'll let the Panthers sneak back in. James Horstman just got word from the bench. Duffy Conroy, one of the fine assistants, stepped onto the floor. Got his attention. Tony Meyer will look to spring free 4-3. Meyer, he's got his look. And it's off to Mark Horstman. The rebound underneath foul on Wisconsin. And that's a bonus situation, so automatically they put uh, the Panthers on the free throw line. Love Bo Ryan. So much fun to watch him coach. What a great conversation we had with him and also with Rob Jeter. When you're a passionate coach, you, you never think it's a foul late in the game. Allen, hammers home the first. Five point deficit. Rob Jeter has given his mentor a big scare tonight. Certainly the closest game between these two teams with Jeter as the head coach. Too many free throw misses. Boy, that could end up, unfortunately, being the difference in the ball game. It is, and it could be, but they still got an opportunity here. If they continue the full court press, try to come up with a, a turnover. If they can't, then they need a foul. Foul now. Allen comes around with a swipe. Boy, Gosser worked a lot of time off the clock. There's your difference, game to game in the six previous matchups. In this game, Rob Jeter's squad, without a starter and a forward and a rebounder and Kyle Kelm, fought their way back. Minutes from guys like Christian Wolf. A big second half from Tony Meyer. And a free throw miss. Four points. Got to shoot it right away. Tony Will. Tumbling to the ground. Wisconsin and a foul. And it looks like the Badgers will win in this matchup for the 28th time in 29 matchups. Well, they were given an opportunity there. Goss are missing that front end of that bonus. And I don't know if coming down the court, that's exactly the look. I know they needed to get a quick look at the basket, but certainly could have ran a screen or, or at least tried to get fouled and get to the free throw line. But they did make a run at it. There's no doubt about it. Certainly, most people in this building as of halftime thought that the Panthers stood no chance. And I'm sure Rob Jeter is very proud of his guys and the way they battled and, and were able to get themselves back into this game just through hard work and, and tenacity. A regular season crowd of 10,143 tonight. Congratulations to the great basketball fans in this state. Not Panther fans, not Badgers fans, basketball fans. You came tonight and this has been a wonderful atmosphere and for Milwaukee's credit, they certainly made it a worth watch. They will roll over at night for the next few nights and think about free throws. Well, and certainly this isn't a, a moral victory for them. You want to win every basketball game. And I, I think what they roll over thinking about is what if they had Kyle Kelm? What if they had Jarob McCallum, two starters? Would this game have been different? I, I certainly think they would have competed more and earlier on. But in the end, Wisconsin improves to nine and two. Career victory for Bo Ryan, number 634. Rob Jeter told us before the game and again at halftime, when I coach, when I teach, I want to make my parents proud, I want to make Bo Ryan proud. When he coached tonight, I would imagine Bo Ryan was proud and a little bit fearful that he might have been upset. Well, absolutely. You root for this guy as uh, certainly Coach Ryan cares a lot about Coach Jeter, and he, he pulls for him about 25 games out of the season, but this is one where he roots against him, so I, I'm sure that He's proud of Rob and, and the fact that his team didn't give up and they were able to came back or come back. But uh, he's also happy to get out of Milwaukee with another win. Certainly a memorable night. When we come back, we'll attempt to grab senior Tony Meyer, his last shot at Wisconsin. He put up a fight. <laughs> 